Hello, today we are going to paint this uh, bouquet uh, with these colorful flowers. Uh, so first, uh, we need to grab our canvas and I will explain if you're going to use a mid, uh, medium-sized canvas. You are going to grab uh, the printing, the sketch, or the drawing you have, and you're going to leave less space on the bottom the, and a bigger space on the top. So I will show you uh, with uh, the smaller, because today I'm going to paint on a small uh, size canvas. Here it's important for you to clip or tape uh, the drawing. So we can check how our transferring process is doing uh, and, and not moving the drawing. So this time I'm going to use transfer paper. I will sp uh, explain you later how if you don't have a transfer paper what to do. So you're going to start going over pressing enough to transfer uh, every single element that we have here um, to our canvas. Uh, so take your time and doing it a little bit faster here. So as you can see, since I, I can double check how it is transferring. If you don't have transfer paper, you can uh, grab the reverse of the page and start shading. Uh, with uh, graphite number two, any uh, regular um, graphite pencil will work. Just uh, do it one or two times, so that will be helpful to have a nice transferring uh, dark area. So I'm showing you here uh, how you're gonna do it. So you have this uh, printing, uh, the drawing and now you're gonna go on the reverse and shade with a graphite paper if you don't have the carbon or transfer paper. So now I will continue with my carbon paper. Where to buy the carbon paper? I usually buy it as the um, uh, office uh, max. I, I usually ask where to find because I never find it my way. Otherwise, in the art stores or Amazon, you can aim for transfer paper and you can find that too. Um, okay, so I'm going over every single element and trying to make sure that I'm transferring all the elements. Now we are gonna start preparing the colors for the background that a mauve or uh, violet, light violet color. This is gonna be a uh, 
pastel color what means uh, which means it is gonna have a lot of white on it but we are gonna start with blue okay sometimes we need to squeeze and even though that is not working in blue in this case I'm using ultramarine blue but if you have cobalt blue or primary blue or windsor blue you can use that now I'm adding red on my palette and for these if you can use a separate plate palette of styrofoam container something that is white will help um, so I'm using white as you can see this is uh, these little bottles that are uh, decorative paintings but they work um, except the smart uh, brand I don't like that one so I'm grabbing a little bit of red uh, grab um, the same amount of blue and um, blend them so I obtain a purple color but in this case the background is a very light volume it means that it's, it's like a pastel color and pastel colors has a plenty see amount of white so I'm gonna start adding a little bit of the purple into the um, the white as you can see if you compare with the white of the palette uh, you can compare there how dark is the violet and how light a little bit light, darker than the than the white of my palette that's why palettes are usually white because I can compare a gray volume will work too also, uh, since I want it to be a pastel color, I can grab a little bit of yellow. Yellow is a complementary color of purple. When you add a small amount of yellow to a color, you're toning down the brightness. So it's a little bit less bright. So that's why we call these pastel colors. It has a lot of white and it's not as bright as the combination of the purple itself. So with this color and try to prepare a nice amount, a lot more than what you need to cover the background. And I will tell you why. So you start um, working one area into the other uh, make sure that you finish one area before moving to the other and I'm doing it pretty fast because I'm just demoing but um, take your time to blend the colors it doesn't matter if this happens that a darker version comes I, I like that variation um, so as I mentioned I prepare a lot of this color and I will tell you why uh, more or double maybe of the amount you, you, you need. So try to cover everything area as close as you can. You can even go a little bit over the drawing if you want. I'd rather do that too. But you don't have to be perfect, not uh, geometric um, lines here. Everything has to flow and organic strokes. So as you can see towards this area, a little bit more red and it's showing, but I like that. So I'm moving pretty fast, but you can take your time you can use cross crisscross um, strokes or just move the uh, brush around like that use a nice amount of paint that will allow you to blend the colors and start on one side and move to the other so I'm telling you to save this paint so how are you gonna do this you're gonna grab a paper towel you're going to cover it with a paper towel and now you're going to spray it with water or add a little bit of water and if you have a plastic bag you can leave it into a plastic bag too so that the paint will not dry and we can continue. Now we are going to start with the sunflowers and for that you can see that there's a dark area on the left and a right. So on the left, so this is when we turn a petal, it's not a circle, when we turn the flower it's an ellipse. So it's higher than wider that ellipse. 
that's what we are gonna do and observe here. So for the sunflower, uh, we are gonna use yellow, red, and white. So here I have put the red first. Yellow. And white. I'm starting to blend in red and yellow to make a nice orange towards the yellow, a yellow orange color, more yellow than red. So this is a nice orange and blend again a nice amount, not a, a lot, but a nice amount. So every time you paint, you need paint to flow, otherwise you're struggling. Uh, so you're going to charge kind of this kind of uh, brush that is a round brush. And now I'm blending a little bit of yellow with uh, white to make a lighter version of the yellow. And have uh, both ready. Uh, as you can see, you have uh, a different versions of, of orange, mid-orange, yellow and light yellow. So I'm blending a little bit more of the orange because I want that uh, paint to be juicy. juicy. So I'm, 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 I'm charging the brush with that color and a little bit of the light too at the same brush. The same brush will have both colors. Now we are gonna start painting uh, the sunflower. And for that, So it's the very tip you press first and then run and push a little bit more to have a wider stroke. It's usually easier to pull towards me than to push. That's why I'm turning the canvas, I'm left-handed, but you find your own way so it's easier uh, to pull than to push. Turn the camber canvas for your convenience. So I have two colors here, so I like how they blend, how the, the, the both colors is showing. Uh, so I'm painting the dark uh, area of the sunflower. Remember, if you don't have the motor skills to just control the very thin part of the petal first and the wider, you can use another the other hand and help you to uh, press, uh, put all the pressure on your wrist. And um, so then it's gonna be easy to control how much pressure you put on that flexible uh, tip of the brush. Now I'm gonna grab the light paint and do the same on the other side. So a little bit of intermediate color, so it's not a harsh change. Okay, there you go. So of course I'm doing this very fast, but you take your time. So this side is dark and the dark and the other side is light. We're gonna do the same with that one that is a little bit tilted so I can see only one, a small area of the center like that. So we are gonna paint first that petals, then the ones that are overlapping. And the center is very elliptical too. Okay, first those petals. And again, if you need to turn the canvas, do it. And I'm doing it a little bit darker. Maybe the best option would be to paint the center, but since I don't have that color ready, I will move forward and do the other petals, the petals that are closer to me. And they're gonna be lighter 
and I realized I need a little bit lighter to, to see the difference between the ones that are towards the back and the, the others turning. So I'm going to start with those small uh, yellow flowers and there I added a lot of white and I'm doing the same kind of strokes. So make sure that uh, you're turning the canvas if you need or it's more convenient for you. So this kind of brush is very useful because it has a very nice tip and I'm changing uh, to for a small brush so it's always nice to use different brushes for different kind of strokes but also sizes because um, if I do all the same it's gonna be boring we are gonna be adding areas where I want to add that light uh, yellow flowers and at this point I realized I should have go a little bit closer with the background uh, and also if you need to use your second hand to control that strokes very thin because petals are usually very thin on the very tip and then they go wider and go a little bit over the center because uh, the center is darker and I can always uh, go over Finishing these uh, petals. Now, next step with the red, I'm gonna grab a little bit of that red and water and I'm gonna make it a little bit more fluid, runny and watery. You can have a handy uh, water spray or just add water. And I'm gonna start um, covering almost every single area that I see the red flowers and even the greens. Uh, can you see, you can still see through the drawing, that's what I aim. Uh, and the contrary, when I did the sunflower, I used thick paint, but now I want it to be watery, runny, and just uh, if you carve in the sunflower, get a little bit closer, but the idea is to um, cover all the area that you go back to your drawing and see the red flowers, orange flowers, uh, we are gonna, this is called a glaze or a wash, so we are covering that area, but um, we still can see the drawing. This is to avoid that white. Um, Going closer to the sunflower, trying to avoid that white. Then we are gonna go over with yellow uh, because I'm trying to paint whatever is closer to me on the on a plane closer to me. I like to paint it um, thicker, so it brings uh, that element forward. So I'm going and moving. You of course you're gonna take your time and doing that just to show you. So I like that uneven shape. Can you see that it's not a circle, a square? Uh, this is a little bit tilted here too. Uh, I, I, that's what I aim in. I don't want a perfect um, uh, red surface there um, with variations. Next, I'm gonna prepare a nice um, orange color. So adding yellow and now white. Mm -hmm. It's going to turn a little bit more into coral depending on the, the red you're using. But the idea is to use a paint that face. In the case of the that it already is painting is more pinkish. 
that uh, coral, so pinkish means more um, red and white shades. But um, I like to make it like this here. So as you can see, it's, it's kind of lighter. If you squint your eyes, you can see that it looks lighter than the red I painted for the background of the flowers. So I cover every area that I think is part of that container and it's that face that is facing to us. Then, a little bit darker, if you squint your eyes, you can tell that I'm adding uh, more red to that mixture and making it darker because I'm going to paint the, the face of the vase or the container that it is just um, not receiving that much light. So it's a little bit darker too. Of course, you take your time uh, to make that uh, straight lines you can use a square brush or you can use tape I will show you um, as we move on at the end how we can you can fix the base with tape okay Now we are gonna use a blue and yellow to make a nice green. Mm -hmm. I particularly have another uh, brilliant uh, green that I can add, but if you don't have, that's fine. You can use phthalo cyan, uh, blue too, and a lot of yellow, and maybe you need to add a little bit of red if you're using phthalo cyan. cyan. Phthalo cyan. Okay, that's a nice. Um, green as you can see is uh, I have a dark version and a light version but I need to start with a, a light version um, for the back I'm gonna a nice so I'm gonna add white because I want it to be lighter I don't want to compete with any elements of it okay so I'm adding um, a nice happy green it has more yellow than blue and um, white if it's too vibrant too like emerald uh, add a little bit of red and yellow so you're gonna start to warm in it it's not gonna be that cool I'm covering the whole bottom area of the painting doing it pretty fast uh, you take your time it can even be a little bit lighter if you wish um, colors on the screen usually looks lighter than I can see uh, in real life so one of the things that you were asking is what's just the difference between top and bottom can you see how smooth it here So I'm gonna grow back, grab back uh, the violet, light violet purple. Remember that I'm till I told you to save it. Okay, so I will show you a trick how to smooth or blend in or feather one color into the other. So I'm putting a fresh coat of purple. Okay, fresh uh, fresh coat of green, and then I'm gonna gra grab a clean brush clean brush, no water, very dry, and have a paper towel handy. Now we're going to go very softly in between both colors. Clean the excess of the painting on a paper towel. And again, going towards the top, clean, 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 towards the bottom. Clean, clean, clean. Because if I don't clean, I'm gonna move too much uh, pigment and paint all over the place. So now we have a softer edges edge here compared to one on the right, right?
I'm doing it again so I can soften it more. And this time I'm doing it in a transversal uh, position. So it's a vertical. So like swiping, swipe mode. <laughs> So now from the from the center to the top again, pressing more and then left like you are just very s subtle, very softly. So now you can really see the difference between a hard edge on the right and a left a soft edge. Okay, doing kind of the same on the right, adding fresh green, fresh purple, and again clean the brushes, clean brush to soften in that area of feathering one color into the other. Then doing uh, vertical uh, strokes, so that helps me to um, soften in. A little bit of green come uh, uh, to the up, but I like that. Uh, I don't like a perfect uh, especially since that area is, is not as bright and the light is more towards the left. At this point, everything looks uh, too red. I'm going to work on this with the center of that sunflower. And for that, I'm going to grab the uh, and a little bit more of a paint uh, going on top of the red to bring that element towards me with thicker paint. So I'm doing that right now. Remember to turn it. I'm not turning, I'm just turning the wrist. So that's what I'm doing. I'm saving it again. Back to a green and this um, I'm, I'm painting the center of the red flowers and the blue flowers to start that in a little bit of a different color. Everything looks too red for me now. The next step is going to be the blue flowers. They are like kind of bells. Bells. I'm going to grab... A new brush, or at least a clean brush, and blue. Blue. White. And have a dark blue version and a light blue. And I'm going to do kind of a small waves or comas. So press there, the side of the brush, and turn, press, and turn, and lift. Can you see the coma? Again, press, turn, and lift. Press, turn, darker this side, again, and again. I want a little bit more here, there. And we have the that bill flower that is uh, looking at us, right? More rounded. Here, it's more on the side. I can see only the side of the flower. So, oh. I'm creating the same kind of comas, but in this case, it's just longer because I'm creating the side of the that campanula. So now again, I have another one. And this 
it's, it's more free shape. Uh, I'm not paying that much attention, but it can be kind of uh, like that Campano lava looking a little bit um, tilted. Okay, I have three nice blue flowers. Adding a little bit of blue here and there to have the color play along the paint, different areas, not to be concentrated in just one area. So can you see this one on the top right side of the canvas? That is kind of a filler. And it can be, um, if you ever seen lilac or um, a bush butterfly, so they are kind of conical. So you can see the dark area as I go up lighter and they're very light on the very top. So it's like having this lilac you can see here. So we are going to try to create a small uh, little flowers that as a whole creates a conical or type of a bunch of flowers. For that we need kind of uh, this kind of katang brushes or uh, a round brush. And we are going to need uh, orange color so round brushes so I'm using red yellow to create an orange and white. Starting with the red. So it's kind of the same red that I have there. So this is going to be kind of a conical triangular shape. So as you can see that red is kind of the same, but I'm going to start lighting it up and make it more orangey. So adding yellow and white. So I need, can you see, um, I can see that it's a little bit lighter but not a lot lighter and that's what I'm aiming to. I will start to leave some area dark in the bottom, that is the area that is not receiving as much light, and start adding strokes that are a little bit lighter but not a lot lighter than the base color we have already there. Press again like teeth and then press a little bit more. Of course take your time doing that. Practice with the other hand for extra support so you have that area dark. And now we're gonna uh, start adding more white So you can see the difference. Put, yeah, you can see that. So these are more towards this, the tip, or the area that will receive more light. Yeah. So we need a dark version. That is the first one that I painted. A little bit lighter, and at the end you can add. So darker, medium, and light. So medium. If I add too light, I'm breaking the shape. So keep that area a little bit darker and add a little bit of darks in between to fill up. So I'm going to do the same with the one on the left. A little bit lighter, but not that much lighter. I, of course, can paint on top of the background. That's the idea. It's closer to me on a plane. So I can put a little bit over the background. It's a little bit lighter, but not that much light. So I'm creating a form. If I put it too light right at this step, 
on breaking the form. Fill any space that's still white. And the lighter version, adding more white and more yellow if you want to make it a little bit different. So now I can see that it's lighter and warmer, more yellow. So there, on the very tip, add a few strokes. If you need to turn the brush so you can pull easily, and if you need your second to control, that's even better. Take your time. So you can see now that perfect. Next row one there. In on your drawing, I put some uh, arrows. If you want to follow that direction, that's going to be all right too. So the dark version can be a little bit different than the ones on the top, doesn't matter, but the, uh, the darkness or lightness is more important than the color. So can you see, I can, it's very similar. And at this point, you can um, start to fill out spaces that are still white. So I'm gonna turn it a little bit more orangey. lighter so a little bit uh, maybe it's too light i'm gonna go back and try to make it a little bit darker yeah that's better so try to blend a little bit that yeah good and maybe that one is a little bit lower so i don't need a lot of light there but i can add a few light uh, petals there or small flowers or fillers yeah so good good so these are the flowers that you can see on your drawing they're reddish pink so i will uh, grab red and white and make kind of a pinkish not yellow so it's more pink than than uh, orangey or salmon color. Uh, try to go a little bit over. You don't have to cover the whole thing. I like the red that I already have. Okay. So let's see. Lighten it up a little bit. Oh, that's too light. Okay, now it's a little bit better because I like them red and strong. I'm using a little bit of magenta. Maybe you don't have magenta, but uh, you might have um, a lizard crimson because I want it to be a little bit different. Uh, so as you can tell, magenta here is more a little bit a purplish, cooler red version. So it's just in order to, to add a little bit of a different color. Yeah, so the one on the top, I'm adding a little bit of that different kind of red. It's a cooler red. From far away, maybe you can see a lot of red and you cannot see the flowers, but if you see your drawing, you're gonna be able to see those flowers. And eventually when I'm adding the, the green as a filler and to unify, that's going to be useful. So again, remember that I told you save that uh, purple. It's very important, that purple, because it's going to help me to now go a little bit closer 
and create uh, with a negative space whatever is surrounding my elements a little bit more interesting shapes so I, I will grab a clean brush deep uh, I have a round and a square you can both both if you use both is you're gonna have different kind of strokes not always the same charge the brush and shape a little bit of that negative space for the flower. Now I can see the flower better. So, now the flower is starting to appear, right? Working with a negative space. The important part is just to um, blend or feather that color again into the background. And since we save that paint, it's going to be the same color, so no problem. And I have a little bit of the red moving around. I like it. So I'm shaping a little bit that flower, that red flower. Cleaning, cleaning the excess and blending it into the, uh, into the background. I'm gonna work a little bit with that other flower and at this point I realize I should have uh, put a little bit more background starting with um, but that's the beauty of painting you always have a solution uh, using the same thought uh, the way of proceeding you're gonna cover every white spot that you still might see of course, on the uh, towards the outside, right? Petals, or and you can shape flowers a little bit with that. Can you see? Shaping it a little bit nicer. There you go. Cleaning the excess and blending or feathering one color into the other in the background here a white spot dark purple remember the dark purple i'm gonna grab a little bit of that and add yellow uh, so um that way i'm gonna turn that purple into a brown a dark dark color you can use black if you use black you use black and add yellow so it's not that black black and do the same you're gonna start um, remember the center that is higher that ellipse is higher than um, wider and look at how beautiful it looks the contrast that's why our eyes immediately drawn to that area because of the contrast of the dark and the light. Small dots, go a little bit over the petals. Uh, and here the same. Remember in between the petals, creating the illusion of a very elliptical um, center. Uh, adding a little bit to these little yellow flowers. Now we have more contrast, so the painting is coming alive. now with blue and yellow a nice green and um, as you can see the contrast with the white palette is dark so all the areas I have green here so I'm gonna paint that and it's dark let's start with a dark volume a dark version so I'm trying to create nice shapes with the 
brush that is um, straight. I can add a little bit um, around the flowers. Sometimes adding a little bit of green close to uh, the flowers. I'm shaping a little bit the flowers itself, like the pink ones. First, I start like a big masses. Smaller brush for smaller areas. So I use different brushes. If you use always the same tool, you're gonna have always the same result. And that is boring, remember. Variety is one of the elements, the principles of the design. Also, we need unity, but so I'm adding with a smaller brush, I will be able to create different kinds of strokes. Checking with my drawing where I can add a little bit more of the green. So making sure that it's not a straight line with all the elements, it's a little bit more diverse. diverse. Adding a little bit of green into that area. Uh, it helps to unify the whole painting. So here you see a connection between the shapes of the greens. They are not all isolated. Some of them are, but as a group, I can I can group in them. Uh, that's good for the eye to flow and follow that greens. creation of that green adding white and yellow and thinning out or uh, adding a little bit of a lighter version kind of what I've done with that flower that I just find it out At this moment, it's nice to take a few moments and step out from a few step away from the painting. Now, looking for instance, I think that since the sand flower is kind of the prima ballerina, the, the area of emphasis, I will reinforce a little bit more paint, a little bit lighter, so it's standing out a little better. A few more strokes, thicker paint. 
that will make it. Here too, if I use a little bit of lighter paint, um, that area is, is more prominent. A little bit of green on the reverse. Now I observe that that can be a little bit lighter in certain areas to pop up as a whole. Now and stop looking at the small elements uh, and each of them uh, separately and start to look as a whole the painting where I can add a little bit more of emphasis or so as you can see it's very light that one adding white so that flower that is facing the light there there's no other flowers uh, casting a shadow I can light it up a little bit here I'm reinforcing the petals of the those flowers with a light pink, just red and white will make pink depending on the red, a cooler red like uh, magenta or alizarin crimson. Um, I have a cooler pink that uh, canyon red. Now we are going to focus on the container. For that we are going to use tape. I'm going to tape a little bit the edges of the face that is facing the light. It's closer to me so it's bigger at the bottom, the sides. sides. Now I'm going to blend a darker version of that color. So you see that it's a little bit darker. Even using the purple, I can add a little bit of purple or blue to that to create a darker version of that and adding water to make it uh, fluid. So it's quite transparent and I'm gonna start shading a little bit. Can you see it's transparent? Uh, shading a little bit that area underneath the leaves and the flowers and very subtle, not everywhere, just the top part. With the same, so it's red plus a little bit of blue. Uh, it's a little bit darker, so I added a little bit of the the bottom line also and making it kind of now uh, going back with a, a lighter version to soften it but I want to make it like a differentiation between so taking the tape off and because I didn't press the tape very, very well, I have a little bit of bleeding, but that's okay. Uh, I can wipe it off. Again, going with the negative, remember that color purple that I told you to save, I can clean that it make that area cleaner if if I wish next so it's now I'm preparing a very light version of of the front the color of the and I'm gonna uh, very lightly add a reflected light and, I, and the paint in the on the screen looks very whitish but it's not white it's a lighter version of that color it has a lot of white but not white uh, when it dries also it's going to be a little bit uh, darker again and i'm blending a little bit but not i don't want the whole face to look so now let's focus on the face that is um, 
facing not facing the light so I'm gonna correct a little bit that area that I'm missing a piece you can see the green is showing so every time you put a tape it's a good idea to make sure there is really glue or attached to the canvas because to avoid the, uh, the bleeding you go with a darker version and as you can see it's a little bit darker, a lot of more purple to the red. So now I can really distinguish one. And it's, it's, it has a lot of white uh, water too. Adding water, you make it transparent. So I still see the color underneath, but, and I decide to move that color a little bit since it's watery, it's very, it's like a glaze. A little bit over those elements that are gonna um, unify them. I decided that, that will be nice to have this. Can you see I'm toning down that flower there and I think it's, it makes everything even stronger. Uh, and remember this is a, a red violet so it has more red than blue um, and it's it's watery so that's why we we call it a glaze we now see very distinctive two faces uh, don't add a pure thick paint just watery this is the same and this is more brownish so it's the purple plus yellow so it's gonna turn into a brownish purple I'm gonna add a very watery too watery but not too much right so uh, even being watery paint uh, will have a um, uh, longer open time to blend it so with a clean clean brush no paint no water I'm gonna start to swipe and to feather that color into the background like with a swiping uh, strokes can you see that so now I can see that the pot is um, sitting on the tables because before that it was just floating mm -hmm. so we have ground rounded that uh, pot I decided to make those petals uh, a little bit shorter, so I'm using red for the negative space and shaping those petals with negative space a little bit shorter. I think if they were two the same with the other side, and since it's turning, that area should be a little bit.
So at the end, I'm looking at that as a whole, it's good to make a last adjustment, but uh, also be careful because sometimes um, we need to know when to stop. Sometimes it's better to stop, let it be like one day and maybe observe it, have a look and there's one area that is really your eye been drawn to and bothering you, that's the area maybe you want to to work a little bit more, maybe creating more negative space, a highlight, but uh, sometimes it's good to stop and give it some time. Okay, now without the blue of the tape, it looks better, right? Uh, less uh, noise, visual noise. Adding some white for the background uh, also helps to make the painting pop up, taking on the visual noise. And that's it. So I want to show you 